Tonight, Netflix's 28-page comment to the FCC, Amazon leaks Kindle Unlimited, and will Siri and Watson team up in the Apple-IBM partnership? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 130 for Wednesday, July 16th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by NatureBox. Order great tasting, healthy snacks delivered right to your door. Forget the vending machine and get in shape with healthy, delicious treats like coconut date energy bites. To get 50% off your first box, go to naturebox.com slash twit. That's naturebox.com slash twit. Hello, everyone. I'm Jason Howell. Let's get right to the tech feed. Now, as you've probably heard, the FCC has extended the comments period deadline on net neutrality from yesterday to Friday due to overwhelming interest. And after their website crashed yesterday, you probably heard about that, uh, probably on the show, in fact. Now, Netflix has submitted to the FCC their very own 28-page comment regarding net neutrality. The company believes that proposed internet fast lanes would be detrimental not only to customers, but to innovation as well. Netflix waged much of its ire directly toward Comcast and Verizon, saying the ISPs held subscribers at ransom over delivery speeds which forced Netflix to pay tolls with the ISPs. One of the key arguments Netflix makes is to suggest the reclassification of the ISPs as Title II services, similar to public utilities. Comcast and others say reclassification would hinder their ability to innovate. Netflix counters this, saying, quote, paid for priority arrangements undermine an ISP's incentive to build, to continue uh, building capacity into its network, end quote. Amazon posted a few test pages to the site that spilled the beans on an upcoming ebook subscription service dubbed Kindle Unlimited, offering, quote, unlimited access to over 600,000 titles and thousands of audiobooks on any device, end quote, for $9.99 a month. Amazon has since removed those test pages, but GigaOM was able to pull a promotional video for the service, further legitimizing the as yet uh, officially unannounced uh, service. According to the video, the service will include a free 30-day trial. There were 638,416 books listed on Amazon's site when the page was live, but none of those appeared to be from the five biggest publishers. That's HarperCollins, Simon & Schuster, Penguin Random House, and uh, Macmillan and Hachette, sorry. Uh, so uh, as a result, you know, choice might be limited at launch. Hopefully it'll open up more beyond. Uh, speaking of ebooks, Apple might be on the hook for as much as $400 million if it loses its appeal in the price fixing case that charges the company with conspiring to inflate ebook prices with five different publishers. Apple agreed to pay the settlement if it's found guilty, though the company reiterated in a statement, quote, we did nothing wrong. And we believe a fair assessment of the facts will show it. Now look out, PayPal. Uh, credit card giant Visa just announced Checkout, their system for making payments on mobile and PCs with a few clicks. This is the second attempt at a payment system for the company. You might remember V.me from 2011, or maybe not. Uh, Visa says the new system can be built directly into e-commerce sites, making paying for a cart easier and in as fast as five seconds. Uh, quote, this is not a wallet. It is a digital form of of the card you love, end quote, said senior VP Sam Schrager. Uh, launch partners include Neiman Marcus, Pizza Hut, Staples, and United Airlines. The U.S. Senate today passed a bill that would allow mobile phone users to unlock their devices, which would make it possible for users to switch carriers with that device once their contract was up. The Unlocking Consumer Choice and Wireless Competition Act passed unanimously, and if it passes the House, will then head to President Barack Obama for his signature. The bill would effectively overturn a January 2013 decision that ceased legal protection of mobile phone unlocking, restoring to the Digital Millennium Copyright Act an exemption that once allowed users to unlock their phones without consequence. Now coming up, driverless cars and the potential for evil, according to the FBI. And next I'll chat with Devendra Hardwar of VentureBeat about the possibility of Apple's Siri and IBM's Watson teaming up. Pretty cool stuff there, if it happens. But first, let's thank our sponsor. I'm going to say something that's going to surprise you. You should be snacking more. Yes.
You need to be snacking more. I need to be snacking more. Why? I've discovered Nature Box, and uh, Nature Box makes it easy for me to want to snack more. Uh, Nature Box snacks have zero trans fats, zero high fructose corn syrup, and nothing artificial. Nature Box sends great tasting snacks right to your door with free shipping anywhere in the U.S. And here's how it works. Pretty easy. You click on the continue button to choose between three subscription options, then place your order. And once you're a member, you can select which snacks you'd like in your monthly box. You can select by dietary needs like vegan, soy-free, gluten-conscious, uh, lactose-free, nut-free, and non-GMO. You can also select by taste if you like savory or sweet or spicy. Uh, the next time you get cranky and hungry and are ready to eat anything, remember Nature Box. Snack guilt-free with coconut date energy bites, uh, Santa Fe corn sticks, Pear Praline Crunch. Uh, the names are even delicious. And over 100 more healthy choices. To get 50% off your first box, go to naturebox.com slash twit. Stay full, stay strong. Go to naturebox.com slash twit. And we thank Nature Box for their support of Tech News Tonight. So I want to welcome to the show Devendra Hardwar, Senior Editor of Mobile Beat at Venture Beat. Thank you so much for joining me on your second Twitch show of the day today. <laughs> hey, thanks for having me. It's good to be here as always. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. We enjoy having you on. We had queued up a discussion on Jawbone initially, and we'll get to that in a second. But first, shortly before air, you published an article to Venture Beat that talks about mm -hmm. the possibility of Siri getting cozy with IBM's Watson supercomputer in light of yesterday's IBM and Apple partnership uh, announcement. Has either company confirmed or denied this possibility? And what kind of an impact do you think this could have on Apple's uh, digital assistant? Um, yeah, they haven't confirmed anything yet. Apple, you know, is always uh, quiet and just yeah. never says anything. IBM, we haven't really heard much from either, unfortunately. But yeah, this was a report between me and my colleague, uh, Richard Byrne Riley. And we've basically just been hearing some chatter from people who would know about what could happen at some point. Uh, so it's all very vague to hide sources and whatever. Um, but the potential is definitely there for Apple and IBM to team up. Um, just in the same way as uh, yesterday's announcement, you know, yesterday's announcement was all about them teaming up for mobile enterprise stuff to get iOS uh, in businesses and kind of helps both companies out. Here, you know, what Siri is good at and what Watson is good at kind of complement each other. So Siri is really good at the main interface. You know, it's a really friendly interface for asking questions and doing simple tasks. Watson's really good at um, looking at a big amount of data and trying to figure out, uh, you know, find interesting things from it. So you can imagine what would happen if like Watson w was uh, sent to your inbox or something or to your calendar. Uh, you'd be able to ask him really interesting questions. Uh, yeah. And uh, I'd be interested to see what that could actually end up being. Would you see this as kind of uh, sim similar or more powerful than like Google's integration of Knowledge Graph into Google Now? It's, uh, you know, I, I think what Google's doing is far more expansive because mm -hmm. Google is just, you know, their goal is to kind of gather all the information in the world. Um, it would, I, I think it could open up very similar things uh, because what's really, what I love about Google now, especially compared to Siri, is that Google now tends to know me, you know, it knows right. my habits, it knows uh, the order uh, orders I have that are shipping, it knows my flights because it's looking at my Gmail account, it's looking at my calendar and other things. And Apple right now doesn't really have anything for that sort of uh, anticipatory knowledge. Sure. You know, Siri, everything about Siri is you commanding it and you giving it yeah, commands and asking it for information. It would be great if Siri was a little more preemptive, was a little smarter, could learn your habits just like Google Now does. So I think it's a, it's a comparable tool, but Siri uh, and Watson would be far more personal, I think, than what Google Now and what Google's trying to do. Google's just trying to collect everything. Not to mention it puts the power of winning Jeopardy in your pocket, and that's pretty cool. Oh, sure. Yeah, I was there. I saw that when they first demoed that in upstate New York. Yeah. It's crazy. It was awesome to see. Cool stuff. All right, well, um, so let's move on to wearables, which was our initial uh, conversation topic before this uh, this article was posted. Yeah. Tech moves too quickly. Uh, it's, yeah. it's kind of a crazy thing. That's why we enjoy it so much. Jawbone, one of the mainstays in fitness trackers, is updating its app with something new that I think is going to appeal quite a lot to people. And mm -hmm. uh, you have you had a chance to play around with this? What is the new functionality that the update? I have, bringing? yeah. So Jawbone, by the way, it's the My Fitness Tracker of choice right now. Right. 
And uh, the thing they added is just a whole new revamped uh, way to track your food. Uh, so Joplin has had food tracking before in their apps, but it was like pretty much every other fitness app out there. You know, it would have a very manual way for you to enter information. Uh, and the information you got back probably wasn't that useful. This new update makes it easier for you to add um, your meals, uh, things that you're eating. And uh, the best thing is, too, it, it creates this interesting thing called a food score. And what Jawbone did is basically simplif simplify that nutritional label that everything has. But I'm sure most people aren't quite sure what it, actu what it actually means. So they have this food score. You can see that in the middle of the screen there. And that basically judges the ratio of good things versus bad things in a particular food item. And tells you, you know if what you're eating is actually good for you. And even if you don't quite understand the individual components, that's a quick glanceable way to see that, oh, this yogurt that I'm eating is actually horrible for me, even though it says it's organic or whatever. Right. Uh, what was funny is that Jawbone's uh, reps told me that even people in their office, uh, they would eat this certain Greek yogurt in the morning. And when they started using this new food tracking feature, they didn't know why they're getting such a low score. But it turns out that particular yogurt had a lot of added sugar. Uh, once they saw that, it, all it took was one look they switched mm -hmm. over to a yogurt with natural fruit and kind of it made their score go higher, but That's potentially great. could make them healthier too. So it's uh, I've used it for a couple items so far. I've only been able to use it for today, but I really like what, uh, what I'm seeing. Um, I'm somebody who hasn't really liked food tracking before just because it seemed like it, it seemed like a lot of work for not much benefit, whereas now the benefits are far more clear and uh, it's much easier to get the data in there. And Jawbone's also partnering up with a couple um, online delivery companies too. So if you make an order from a couple of these firms, you know, your the nutritional information for that order will automatically get plugged into your Jawbone profile. And they wouldn't comment on anything connected with Grubhub and Seamless. That's what I'm really waiting for. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if that happens. I'm just addicted to those services. Yeah. Now, food tracking, obviously, it's it's notorious. Like it's it's one of those things that everybody wants in their fitness tracker right. for some you know one reason or another. But it's just really kind of finicky and difficult in practice to you know find the item, punch it in, that kind of stuff. Does this make it easier to find those items and uh, kind of roll with it, or does it kind of approximate that to make it more simpler? Or how does it how does it approach I, that? Yeah. I, I I think it's a little more intelligent than other services okay. I've used. Um, it first of all, it knows, it learns what you like to eat, uh, and also the particular times of day. So if you're opening it up at lunch and you always go to like a salad place by your work, that information will already be popped up when you're going to plug in what you're eating. So that bit is nice. Um, you can also add individual components to meals, and they also have meals from a couple uh, retailers too, uh, like Starbucks and others. So you know, very common uh, chains. Mm -hmm. That information will be there. You can plug it in really easily. And I, I think over time, too, we're going to see more and more services kind of open up their menu information and put that nutritional information out there. There's also the ability to, like, just search for a nearby restaurant and try to pull in their menu data. Mm -hmm. Not many restaurants support that right now, but there's a service powered by Foursquare and I forget the name of it. Uh, but it's a service that basically just sort of lets you check into that restaurant and add particular menu items to your oh. Jawbone profile. So that hopefully right. will take off at some point, too. Yeah. Now, uh, finally, we all expect Apple to come out with its own wearable soon enough. And, of course, Google introduced its Android Wear platform at Google I.O. a few weeks back with a couple of uh, wearables, uh, one mm -hmm. of which I'm, I'm wearing here, actually, the, the <laughs> yeah, Samsung Gear Live, which like, I like. I'm pretty it's happy with right. it. It's all right. Yeah. Uh, our features that that Jawbone is kind of integrating into their wearable enough to set itself apart from the competition, do you think? Are they just kind of two different things or, or do they have something to fear here? Yeah, I mean, so what I've noticed is I've tested all sorts of wearables at this point and everybody kind of has the same basic features, right? Everybody has a way for you to track your steps. Uh, everybody has different ways for you to track your sleep habits. But I think what's really differentiating some of these companies is what they actually do with that data. And what I like about Jawbone is that they spent a lot of time and energy uh, focused on creating these great little insights mm -hmm. that kind of uh, are targeted to you and your habits and how you actually live and work out. Um, how, so they bring up the app brings up these insights, which basically could lead you to better habits. Like if it noticed you haven't been sleeping enough it may send you a link pointing out to the benefits of healthy sleeping habits or something like that. Or if it's with this new food tracking, if it notices you're eating something that's not quite good enough for you, or if it notices you're going over your daily uh, calorie limits or something, it could send you a warning. So 
I, I think what we're seeing more and more is the companies who can actually do something useful with mm -hmm. all this information they're collecting right. are the ones that are going to stand out. I think that's part of the uh, that's part of the assumption with Apple and their their whole health product. Sure, and it's definitely been one of the biggest weaknesses from Samsung's products because you do get all this health info in their gadgets, uh, but they don't. It doesn't really do much for you. Sure. Uh, well, great insight. Really appreciate having you back on the show, Devendra. Um, Thanks. Tell, tell people where they can follow you online, find your work. Sure. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at twitter.com slash Devendra. I write about tech every day at venturebeat.com, and I podcast about movies and TV at slashfilm.com. Excellent. We appreciate you coming back. We'll see you soon. Thanks. All Bye. right. Thank you, sir. All right. And finally, we here at TN2 love the idea of driverless cars. Well, according to an FBI report obtained by The Guardian, the Bureau believes that bad actors could use them as a lethal weapon and revolutionize high-speed car chases. And that's not all. The report states that criminals could multitask, for example, shoot at law enforcement while the getaway car drives them away. The FBI does believe that autonomous vehicles will help reduce the high number of traffic accidents and it'll make tailing a suspect simpler. The report states algorithms can control the distance that the patrol car is behind the target to avoid detection or intentionally make opposite turns at intersections, yet successfully meet up at later points with the target. See, it's a win-win for law enforcement and the criminals. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to this show at twit.tv slash TN2 and write us at TN2 at twit.tv. Don't miss our new news uh, program every morning, or every weekday morning anyways, Tech News Today. That's tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Jason Howell. Thank you so much for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.